So thanks for coming to this event. Um, my name is Carmen Salas, and this is my first time working with NIM, with Ellen and Janice. Uh, Regine and I, we have uh, known each other for a few years, some time now. I don't remember the first time we met, I think in London. And um, we've done, we have previously collaborated in small initiatives. Um, and I have to say the first thing that I would like to say is that I'm quite thankful for uh, uh, the opportunity to learn not only about the uh, uh, practices and values and what uh, NIM is about a bit more, uh, but also uh, to have the opportunity to exchange um, ideas and concerns about uh, such an important topic, the uh, Mediterranean, um, which we've done through the exhibition Regina and I have curated for NIM. Um, so, my presentation is a bit uh, different to Regine's uh, presentation because uh, Ellen, she asked me to talk about my practice and a manifesto that I wrote uh, back in 2020. Um, but also because I, I'm not going to be focusing that much on exploring uh, artistic practices, but more about uh, looking at the art sector from a systemic uh, perspective. Uh, so I have uh, structured my talk uh, in four parts. So I will be talking about my practice. I will start uh, talking about my practice. And then I will also talk about uh, briefly about the uh, manifesto I created in 2020. And also I will uh, talk about the importance of creative practice for social transformation. And I will finish by uh, sharing um, a case study or a I call it a provocation on uh, practices of change and resistance, or also what I call practices for transitions, because they, I think they are the type of practices that I think we should be uh, talking about or talking a bit more about uh, in these transition times. So my curatorial strategy or focus revolves around six main areas, uh, infrastructural critique, arts, ecology, and systems rewarding through creative practice. And uh, with that, I, I want to advocate for the idea that artists and creatives, we also have the capacity to uh, create new narratives and to think about different uh, or alternative futures, transformative and uh, regenerative practices, the role of art in driving systemic change, and the role of art and culture to support the eco-social transformation of our societies. Um, this, I have taken this for some uh, from social media, so those are posts that I have uh, shared in, um, I don't remember if it was Twitter or uh, Instagram or Facebook, but I'm just showing them so you can understand where I'm at with my practice, because my practice has been in a transition mode for almost 10 years, and I'm still navigating the transition. So I don't know where am I, I'm going to be in two years' time, but I think they reflect quite well uh, my practice and what is important for me. Okay, so um, I'm currently involved in a production and a curatorial capacity on a project uh, looking at the uh, impact of human activity and the changing uh, climate on the uh, coastal ecosystem of Cadiz, where I live in southern Spain. Um, these are just some photos of the process because we are still uh, putting together the documentation material and there is a website, but we are still working on the uh, material. So um, for the um, first stage of the project, we interviewed uh, a group of uh, local actors, including farmers, policymakers, um, biologists, uh, and uh, cooperatives working in permaculture, permaculture. So the project also involved the creation of a short documentary and a video, uh, sorry, a short documentary and a website, and it will culminate in a, a toolkit for students, uh, which we are going to implement uh, in local schools from um, December, January next year uh, at the latest. Uh, so part of my work also involves a strategic support for institutions. 
for the past two years, I have been helping the uh, City Council of Trenzen in Bratislava in developing the uh, strategy and the creative uh, program for the 2026 uh, European Capital of Culture. So we won the uh, candidacy, and uh, we are now we are going to start implementing the um, the, acti the activities. Well, more than implementing, pre-producing, because we will be uh, we will be implementing the uh, the program in 2026. So this is the bid book that we sent and we won the candidacy because of this bid book and we were a bunch of, uh, I don't remember how many national, local, national and international curators, scientists, policy makers, um, like many uh, creatives and, uh, and people working also on um, uh, systemic change as well. Okay, so... I have given you, we have printed out some copies because um, I don't think I, in 20 minutes I will have, I, I have the time to read through the manifesto that I created. It's a non-perfect, uh, non, non, not yet uh, complete because it's an in-progress document uh, that I created in the middle of the pandemic uh, to, ref to show, to um, illustrate what my position and my, my values are with uh, respect to the art sector. And I also created a manifesto in response to um, a series of uh, situations that I had with two institutions because they wanted me to work for free on a really long project. And I, I had like, I tried to be polite with them and we had a lot of conversations, but the, every time we, try to find a um, solution, the um, feedback to me was that they didn't have any funding. So I was like, okay, so I didn't do the work. I didn't do the work for them. And after that, I was like, okay, I need to do something about it because I had also many people complaining about this situation. So I created the, uh, uh, the manifesto. And um, this uh, project or piece or document, it builds on uh, previous work and also on previous uh, reflections about our sector and its uh, structure and its possible futures. So um, uh, talking about the manifesto and about the uh, uh, structure or the systemic uh, problems around our sector, uh, I wanted to say that I feel that our, our sector has been facing a a structural and deep-rooted uh, problem for decades, and unfortunately, um, many projects they run with a lack of resources, both human and uh, funding. And for me, this uh, does nothing but contribute contributes to the precarity of the sector and to the exhaustion of uh, our teams. So, uh, I. Part of what I try to express in the manifesto is the need for building a just infrastructure for the arts. And um, I want to explain a bit about why, what do I mean by that. Uh, so for me, um, building a just infrastructure for the art means to find the conditions for a project, but also for the people who work on the project uh, to thrive and to flourish. And it also means to um, put in the uh, quality of the process and the uh, um, relationships that we build throughout the process at the same level as the end result. And, um, and it also means to shift in our uh, current value framework and the way we me measure success. So, so that relationship building, uh, positive human values, and the sustainability of our sector and environment, they become um, uh, key outcomes. Um, so for me, um, the, the how we do things is as important as what we do. And um, I'm showing a, a quote by a, a Mexican artist that I really like, and I, am, uh, I have done a few projects with him in Mexico. And I, I wanted to show the quote because um, it resonates very much with my values and the, um, the, uh, what I have been talking about so far uh, in this talk. We all know the causes of climate change, but most people find it difficult to change their habits, 
especially because they are immersed in, a, in the system that operates solely on economic lo logic, newly find the possibility of acting in a harmonious relationship with the environment. The main driver of this problem is our anthropocentric vision, which has generated a disconnection from our symbiotic relationship with the environment. The only possibility to reverse the damages and guarantee the prosperity of life that we know is to renounce uh, our current system and use all our creative potential to reconfigure the system based on respect and love for our planet, which allows us to restore harmony and find true wellness. Um, so I'm going to be talking now um, um, about uh, a project uh, briefly uh, that, by the way, is exhibited here in this, in this same wall. So I have decided to uh, briefly explore uh, this project because, again, I think it relates very much to uh, my values, to where I'm at with my work, and also with uh, the concepts and ideas that, are, uh, that I, um, present, I uh, presented in my manifesto. And it's also very much related to uh, some other projects that I'm currently, uh, currently uh, developing. So uh, marine caves are unique um, uh, and isolated refugees of biodiversity, and these uh, spaces are being increasingly filled with uh, new materials and new objects and um, uh, waste, different types of uh, waste. So um, the project is created by, has been created by, by Hypercom, which is uh, an artistic, artistic duo based in Athens. Uh, so the project was created in response uh, to this uh, issue and um, it is the outcome of a year-long uh, collaboration between the two artists and a team of uh, researchers exploring the uh, plastic, uh, plastic pollution in the marine ecosyst ecosystem of uh, Crete. Um, so the uh, collaboration involved the development of uh, sustainable floor tiles, uh, which parallel to um, creating a new use for all the waste and introducing it in the human domain, they are also cutting down the uh, use of uh, other materials and uh, sand uh, extracted for each purposes. So the outcome is a series of uh, floor tiles uh, made of uh, oceanic uh, pollutant, whether it's microplastic or ropes or uh, plastic objects. Why is there a practice and this project is specifically so important and I for me, at least, and I think it's important to share, and what uh, values emanate from the work that I think are worth sharing with you today. So, uh, hypercom uh, practice have, has been formed around the uh, idea of um, a sustainable, uh, responsible consumption and sustainable art production uh, since uh, 2017, when they uh, went public for the first time, and they with a pop-up show, and in that pop-up show, everything was, uh, all the materials and the objects uh, were repurposed, and since then, everything they have created uh, has been uh, uh, done with repurposed and recycled materials. So, uh, uh, for me, the project is about, uh, all their practice is about, and specifically this project is about, uh, Art, creativity, science, and technology for change. It's about uh, res uh, restorative, rege regenerative, and transformative practices, uh, promoting the values of recycling, repairing, and reusing. Also, responsible consumption. And I wanted to read a quote about them that I found on their website. Uh, a momentary gesture of, uh, gesture of cleaning up uh, these sites will only cause momentary relief. The larger oceanic issues clearly require systemic transformation, such as the reformation of the social mentality towards consumption and the revaluation of our practices using a new set of values, one that focuses on the long-term implications of our practices. Uh, so the work is also about sustainable art production, sustainability, because they work with scientists uh, on, on long-term uh, projects, and it's also about uh, 
sourcing local materials. So they also uh, talk a lot about localism and about trying to work with local people in uh, resourcing the materials that they are going to use for their, um, their project. Uh, so, so that is all about. Thank you.